Well, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time to press play and see what in the world this video is about. So a little backstory. During 2018, I heard what I felt to be a fairly clear message from the Lord that I needed to write a story about my life, about what happened more than 30 years ago when I made some choices that I I guess I would look back and say I regret it. But it's part of my story, and that 30 years has gone quickly. But God has asked me now to be authentic in what I'm doing, not only in ministry, but also when I teach and when I come to you just like this, and bring truth <laughs> to bear. So I want to read for you, or I want to project to you here, the preface from a book that I wrote during COVID called 90 Days on the Inside, a short timer's journey of brokenness, surrender, and healing. And it chronicles a time, long, long time ago, when I made, as I said, these choices. And they were very detrimental to who I was and who God intended me to be at the time. And they landed me in a very precarious situation. But I'm going to come to you a little by little and just bring you this story. And I thought, let's just start today with the preface. What is this really all about? And so I'm going to do that now. And I would love to get your feedback and for you to engage in this message as we take little baby steps to bring it to you. So 90 days on the inside, preface. The journal. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that accounts. Winston Churchill. I found myself leafing through old files in a safe I hadn't opened in years. There it was, an 80-page handwritten journal from 1995, chronicling a time in my life that I would rather have forgotten. Intrigued by the prospect of discovering what I had experienced some 25 years earlier, I opened the three-hole punch notebook and began to read. I couldn't put it down. I was transported in time to a place long ago, shelved in the memories of my mind, a place of secret schemes, fear and trepidation, shame, guilt and incarceration. I had forgotten more than I remembered. It came rushing back to me. And at that moment, I was reminded of God's promise. You'll tell this story someday. Well, that day has arrived. The 90 days I spent locked up began a journey of descent into what I Call and what St. John of the Cross called the dark night of the soul. I was a stranger in a foreign land. Yes, I was. I was certain God had something for me through it all. After a five-year period of waiting for the hammer to drop, the day had arrived for my sentencing and eventual departure. I decided to write about it, and now it's become a part of my story. A story of brokenness, surrender, healing, and redemption. A restoration of the days the locust had eaten, reclaimed for the kingdom, the kingdom of God. In the following pages, I've shared insights into a life committed to Christ, but compromised to the world. A time where I seemingly knew better how to run my life as I chased down every opportunity to show the world that I had what it took. To make it in this crazy place called Earth. I've chronicled the years leading up to and long after that fateful day on December 1st, 1995, when I self-surrendered to the U.S. Marshal at 601 Market Street in Philadelphia. The later years are laced with stories of surprises, incredible pain, and miraculous restoration. For each of us, there is a vast opportunity for hope and joy in living a life centered on Christ and not self. In understanding and agreeing that the decisions we make have far-reaching consequences, way beyond the years that we occupy this planet. Throughout the book, I've shared stories, some from my personal journals, as I consider God's provision and insights for living. Before, during, and after my incarceration in a federal correctional institute and a federal prison camp in Ferriton, New Jersey, the flow of the journal entries have been left largely uninterrupted only to make observations at chapter breaks and to help put perspective to my writing. I've left the words intact in their original form with only a few minor grammatical corrections. Each chapter concludes with a few questions for individual reflection 
or discussion in a small group setting. These exercises can be a catalyst for understanding at a deeper level the life lessons that I have learned through my experiences. The later chapters demonstrate a shift in perspective, an application that extends beyond the brokenness. God will do the unimaginable when we're willing to surrender to his calling, to seek security in our identity as a child of God and witness a transformed life given to developing an intimacy with Jesus that heals all wounds. The appendix is packed with news articles, photos, court transcripts, and other resources highlighting some of the more memorable moments in this journey. Not all of them pleasant, but absolutely necessary. This is a story of brokenness, surrender, healing, and redemption. It only can be told through the lens of freedom in Christ, one secure in the knowledge of who I am and whose I am.